the new North Carolina head basketball coach looks like it's going to be Hubert Davis. Uh, we we kind of talked about this a little bit last week when when Roy retired, uh, or at least I did on on the solo show on on Thursday when I ran out of time and had to do a fifteen minute show. Um, but it, it seemed like that was the obvious choice, right? Because it, this is another one of those spots. It'll it'll probably happen when Nick Saban retires from Alabama. It it has happened before. It'll happen at Duke. It'll happen at many many places. When the legend retires at a really good spot, it happened when Dean Smith left, right? Bill Guthrie ended up taking over. You don't get a superstar to come in right after the legend. It just doesn't happen. Nobody wants to follow in those footsteps. And Hubert Davis was on staff for the last eight years under Roy Williams. He left a cush job at ESPN to come back and be an assistant coach here. He went to school at North Carolina. He was the head guy under Roy Williams. He knows think, how the I system's think the, run. I think these the reason these things happen is because the guy leaving, because they leave on good terms and the way it's happening, I think they're leaving. They get to they kind of get to handpick their predecessor. Now, I, I I will say this. Bubba Cunningham, the AD at North Carolina, did reach out, and, and he kind of swung for the fences with, with a few things. I mean, he reached out for Jay Wright and yeah. whatever else. He even said, like, I reached out. There's The big names don't want to leave where they are. And who would blame them? I mean, they've built up their own system, their own program where they are. Why would you leave just to go to North Carolina to try and rebuild following a legend? Um, But I I do think, yes, there is something to be said for that because, I I mean, would we really believe that Roy Williams had nothing to do with who the next coach is in North Carolina? I I don't buy that. So I didn't get to talk about it because I wasn't on the show Friday or um, or Thursday, Thursday, this morning show. Um. I every year we've done a tournament bracket. Every year, Michigan or North Carolina have been in it. I I don't really look at their bracket. I don't look at anything. I basically just write them into the Final Four. Not Michigan. Michigan State. Yeah. There are two coaches. There are two coaches in college basketball that I don't. I don't have any ties to these schools. I'm not a North Carolina fan. I'm not a Michigan State fan. I don't. I have any connections to them. I I have loved. I have I follow coaches. And I've loved these those two men, and I have followed them kind of religiously, and it's paid off really well over I don't know the last decade, decade and a half yeah. of of watching college basketball and and supporting the sport and 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 betting on it and following it um, and cheering for it. I don't know that there's a single coach that's ever had more fun winning than Roy Williams at him dancing in the locker room. It, it will will always live in my mind. That is how He's I'm going to remember him forever. That's that, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And and I liked the way that he won. Is is he didn't sell his soul to complete one and dones every year? He would have one or two freshmen that were big time, but he always had second, third year guys, a couple of seniors on the team. D- Duke, North Carolina, or Kentucky, they they sold their souls. Yeah. And they said Kansas, they they sold their souls. And they we're just one and done, and we'll start five freshmen every year. And that's just what we're gonna do. We might have a sophomore on the team. That's that's the list. They've realized that's the way to go with basketball. And and it's listen, they've done well. They've all done well. Roy is is one of the few outside of Villanova that that has been able to win consistently without completely selling your soul to the one and done. And I kind of find that a little respectable. Oh, it's absolutely respectable. And it's also, I think, why he decided to go ahead and retire right now. I, I talked about it on last week's show. I think that he did this because, and he's he's told basketball writers about this, he doesn't like the direction that the sport is going. Yeah. He doesn't know that he can keep up. And, and him saying in his press conference that he doesn't know that he's the right guy for this yeah. job anymore uh, kind of alluded to it, right? It's the whole idea of the transfers and, you know, the one and done is is a whole other thing. The NIL stuff is a whole different thing that's going to change the sport drastically in the coming years. It, there's just a lot of changes. And when you are, you know, a 70-year-old man who's had back problems and back surgery and whatnot in the last however many years, you know, he, he was at practice just three years ago where he couldn't even stand up. Where he couldn't stand up. I remember yeah. that. No, he's he's had issues. I think he would figure all those things out if he was in better health and, and, he's, and a lot he's younger. he's good now. Like, he, he doesn't oh, yeah. seem to have any Hell problems. Yeah, he's good. But, but if he's good now, why go through the hassle 
if you're 70 well, years old, yeah. when you can just go home and play with the kids, you know, play That's with right. the grandkids. You, you, yeah, you get to enjoy the rest of your life, and, and, you know, you worked this far, and you worked this hard, and you made your, your nut, and you don't ever have to work another day in your life, and now you get to do whatever the hell you want. You're not kissing some 16-year-old's ass. There's a lot of beauty to that, and there's a lot of joy to that, and I, I, I respect it, and I appreciate it. I think he's one of the best coaches that we've seen in our lifetime ever. Hey, he, and, he's and, only he's only had two head coaching jobs. He uh he's yeah. won four hundred games at Kansas and he's won over four hundred games in North Carolina. And That's that right. is pretty awesome. Like pretty, it, pretty strong resume that he's <laughs> never really had a losing season, that he's never once like, you know, had a had a real down team, a bad team. You got that right. Now I mean he did have his first losing season last year, but yes. It, I mean, do we count that? Like it, you know, it is what it is. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.